There has been a growing concern over an economic slowdown and possibly even a recession this year. So states are arming themselves with a war chest of funds to counter. We're talking state municipal bonds. It's sunny outside, but are states prepared for a rainy season? And why should they be? Find out right now on UBS Trending. Hi, everyone, and welcome to UBS Trending. I'm your host, Anthony Pastore. I'm here with my colleague and friend, Sadiq Mukherjee, fixed income strategist from the Chief Investment Office. Sadiq, good to see you and have you back in the studio. Good to see you, Anthony. Um, you know, I, you, you put out a recent report entitled States Are Ready for a Rainy Day, and it talks a little bit about the budget stabilization fund that states have in place. Give us a little bit about more about what that means, specifically in state bonds. Why is this so important right now? Sure, good to be with you. Uh, just to back up a little bit, uh, we're talking about states and the general obligation bonds that states issue, and that is a cornerstone of the $4 trillion municipal market. So the health of states is critical to the overall municipal market, just sheer, because of sheer size. And with the worries about the economic slowdown, there have been questions about what does that do to state budgets? Do they have fund reserves? And that's probably the most important topic right now in terms of the credit quality. States are sitting on a war chest, as you mentioned, of funds that cover their expenses. And as you can see from the chart there, um, the orange bars are the rainy day funds, which are budget stabilization funds. They can be used to plug budget holes, fiscal deficits, and there are other range of funds in their general arsenal that they can use as well. So combined, they, are, they have about between anywhere between 25 and 30 percent of their expenses in these reserves. That's a historical record. Just for some context, when they were entering the great financial recession of 08, 09, they were about 7 to 10 percent. So it's almost three times as high today as it was during that time. So, so it seems that states are prepared right now to navigate any economic challenges that we might be facing as we're looking towards 2023. There may be a recession ahead, continued slowdowns. So they're, they're ready for this. Absolutely, they yeah. are. And, but not every state is the same. I'm imagining there are states that have larger budgets, depending on pensions or anything that are, uh, you know, any kind of uh, geo bonds that they may have out in the state, or if there's any big projects that are going on. Tell us what the differences are sometimes state by state here. Sudhir. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, so there is a wide range. So there is wide differentiation between states. So a, a, a whole um, number of states have fund reserves that exceed 50% of their expenses, which uh, we have not, never seen in, in the historical track record. Uh, and there are states that are you know, between 5 and 10 percent. So there's a wide range. But the key point here is that the vast majority of states, barring a few states, are sitting on historically high amount of fund reserves. Right. How did they accumulate these fund reserves? Was it because of the slowdown economically and, of course, the lack of travel, lack of tourism, lack of having to run trains or manage highways during the first years of the pandemic? Is that where it's all coming from? So uh, from if you go back 20, uh, about 20 years, they started building up these reserves and, and they started really building them up after the great financial recession of 08, 09. Right. So over a decade, they've been building this up. And of late, during the pandemic, the extraordinary f uh, federal fiscal support, and then subsequently the enormous rebound in tax revenues drove these funds even higher to historical record levels. It's incredible. So, yeah, but, but you do expect states to kind of still f look towards potential shortfalls in the coming months, correct? Absolutely. And, and a case in point, California. Uh, California budget just uh, was re re revealed by uh, Governor Newsom, and they have a $22.5 billion uh, budgetary deficit, which is a large number. Right. Uh, but the point here is that they have enough uh, uh, expenditure cuts to deal with those revenues, and they don't plan to dip into the reserves, which are also at historical highs. So all in all, investors shouldn't be too concerned about uh, the oncoming slowdown. That's terrific. Um, but here's another question. When people are looking at getting into municipal bonds or they're talking to their advisors, they want to see how they're, well they're rated for credit quality. Given all of the rainy day funds that are sitting inside of most of, of all of the states, how do you, what is the main criteria to judge them on credit quality right now? Yeah, so that, that, that's, the, that's the really, really where the rubber meets the road. So I would say in the longer term, you have demographics, you have tax competitiveness, economic competitiveness, and, and fiscal, overall fiscal health, 
uh, pensions, all of them impact long-term credit quality. But in the short run, the key word is financial flexibility. And that's what these large fund reserves deliver. They deliver a lot of flexibility to states to deal with any oncoming slowdown. That's terrific. Um, and it, yeah, that, that's great, Sudeep. And you know, what, for investors themselves, um, when they're talking to their advisors, what criteria should they be looking for? When they're I, thinking about investing in some of these muni bonds. So, so a lot of the investors are, like, let's say in California, or high tax states like California and in New York. So they typically tend to buy uh, in-state paper because mm -hmm. of tax reasons. So I think the, the message to them is that even though there, are, there could be tax revenue shortfalls because that tracks um, uh, economic slowdowns and there may be, even be a mild recession, um, but they should rest easy that their state bonds are uh, of very high quality and will remain so given these fundamental strengths. So it's, I wouldn't even call it a rainy day fund anymore. It's a sunny day fund considering <laughs> the amount of funds that they have sitting in reserves. It's terrific. Yeah, well, well if it rains, they're ready for a rainy season. That's right, exactly. Well, Sadeep, thank you so much. Always good to have you here. Thank you. Um, and as we do think about the rest of the year, we could see some rainy days ahead of us given what we're expecting from Central banks, obviously, we're looking to potentially see a little bit of a recession towards the end of the year. That's the CIO view. So it's great to know that there are some opportunities out there for investors. Thanks, Sadiq. Good to see you. Thank you. Great. And for more information on anything we talked about today, please visit our website at UBS.com forward slash views. Plus, take a look at all the social media platforms. There's lots of UBS content up there, including content from Sadiq and the rest of the chief investment office here at UBS. And if you have any questions or would like to discuss this topic with your financial advisor, please Please give them a call. Uh, they are the best course of action to make sure that you are doing the right thing in your own portfolio with your own financial time horizon. So take a look um, at the information on the site and talk to your FA. And until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. We hope you have a great rest of the day. And remember to keep your eyes on what's trending. We'll see you soon, everybody.